Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in by a company who sends me quite a lot of consoles and this one is a little cock up. So this Switch originally came in for a charger port and unfortunately during the reassembly process or the disassembly process the LCD connector has possibly been damaged. So we're going to see what we can do about getting this fixed and try and get it working again. So first thing I'm going to do is of course verify that this thing is indeed charging. So I'm going to take my little USB amp meter which is this thing here. This is going to tell me what kind of current the console is drawing and I'm going to plug it in to a USB extension lead because I want you to be able to read it. So I'll plug it into an extension lead, like so, and you can see that's working absolutely fine. Um, I'll try and keep it the right way, right way around. Then I'm going to take a USB-C lead and just plug it into the console and see what's actually happening with it. So, I'll plug that in. Um, straight away we get fast charge. So, the console is working. Yeah, and I can hear the... I can hear it actually working but there's nothing on the screen so the console itself is working so we've done he's done the charger port successfully let's just check it the other side make sure it's charging that side which it is excellent so there's something wrong with the screen now he said he thinks it's going to be the um lcd connector so the lcd connector are these little things here um I ordered these the other day and they've just come today so i've managed to, i can actually get this job done now if it is the lcd connector and uh, these cost around about £4 each I think and they're very very small there's a lot of pins and it's not the easiest task in the world to do but we're going to see if we can get this working again um, so like I said this came from the company that sends me quite a lot of consoles and yeah I mean there's I've seen this a fair few times so you know it's yes it's a repair shop cock up but at the same time it's very easily done with these consoles if you're not careful when you're disassembling it, disassembling them or when you're reassembling them, it's quite easy to damage the LCD connector. I believe my mate Vince, um, so if you don't know who my mate Vince is, he does trying to fix videos on YouTube. And I believe the first few that he did, he actually brought the LCD connector on them. So it is quite common. And uh, if you're not, careful you're going to be you know you well you've got to be careful otherwise you're going to be breaking the lcd connector now obviously like i said this is a repair shop mess up but at the same time the guy that did this is a competent technician you know he does he does nintendo switches and charger ports and things like that all day every day um he is a competent technician i'm not saying it's not his fault because technically it is but at the same time it's an easy mistake to make uh, now, if it was someone who I believed wasn't competent, then I'd have something to say about it. But because I know for a fact this guy does charger ports and HDMI ports all day, every day, I know for a fact that he knows what he's doing. And, you know, this is just one of them things. It's a simple mistake. And luckily, you know, he sent it to me. He's offered to pay for it. I'm not going to charge him for it. Um, I'll charge him the co co parts. I'll charge him the cost of the parts only, but that's about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's it's just one of them things. Like you know, it, it, these these things happen, and well, that's broken. Um, you know, we've all made mistakes. Um, I did a PS4 the other day, one of my own consoles, and I took took the HDMI port back off because it wasn't working, and I think I melted the connector, and then I ripped a trace. The point is, if you get it fixed, then you own up to what you've done, and if you learn from it, then you know, as long as it can be fixed, where's the harm? Now, yes, the customer wasn't happy at the fact that this is going to be sent off because the person who sends me these doesn't do micro soldering. And we've got a screw missing there, so I'll note that. Um, I will let him know about that and tell him to replace it because I don't have any spare Nintendo Switch screws. But, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's just one of them things. Um, but yeah, if you if you don't know who my mate Vince is, you should really go and check his channel out because he is 
he does do some great content. He try he tries to fix pretty much anything. Um, if it's broke, he's his excuse is if it's broke, it, I'll try and fix it. You know, it doesn't matter what it's worth, doesn't matter whether it's worth fixing. He just does it for the education and the content, um, and just purely for the love of fixing things, which is kind of why I do it. But I just focus on consoles because I enjoy working on them. Uh, I enjoy giving them a new lease of life. Okay, so the LCD connector isn't actually in. Right. Okay. Uh, and there's no thermal paste on there, so I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, I should really disconnect the battery first, I suppose. Um, I think he's just put this back together just because it's broken. Um, a little thing that technicians tend to do is if, if it's broken, there's no point in applying thermal paste. Um, so yeah, it's just one of them. So I'm going to have to check the thermal paste under here. He's probably put some under this bit. It does feel like he has. And yep, there is some thermal paste there. So the reason I've took that off is because I need to get to this. So I'm going to take a look and see what's actually going on with it. Uh, it might just be a case of he's not been able to get it in properly. Uh, who knows? Right, so we actually put that screw, that missing screw, in wrong. So the screw was screwed into there. No, it wasn't. No, it is missing, sorry. Um, never mind, ignore me. I am an idiot. The screws I took out was the... screws for the, uh, the headphone jack. Right, so let's try and... Well, let's take a look first and see what's actually going on. So the, the, the screen ribbon doesn't actually look damaged, to be honest. Let me just zoom in on that. So that doesn't look damaged. And that looks fine as well. So what's actually wrong with it then? Alright, so let's try and just connect this screen up. Um, because, I mean, if the screen go if the screen ribbon goes in albeit a little bit stiff then you know what's the point in risking breaking it more but if it goes in and makes a connection on all pins and nothing shorts out then there's no point changing it right so it's not actually making a connection it's not going in properly um yeah is it going to go in uh no that's not going to go in is it so that lcd ribbon is definitely damaged that's the furthest it will go in uh as you can see i don't want to risk damaging the connector any more than it already is but that's the fur furthest that's going in and that's not going to make a connection um just to show you that i don't need to connect the digitizer up But yeah, that's that's uh, that's not turning on. Oh, it's not showing that it's turning on. Um. Well, okay. Let's get the board out and let's let's see what we can do about getting this LCD connector changed. Right. Okay. So it's a little bit of an awkward camera angle, but we should be all right with that. So let's uh, let's try and get this connector off, shall we? So what I've done is I've put the motherboard inside a board holder. Try to secure it as best as I can. It's not quite secure, but I need to be able to get to the underneath of this connector to be able to heat it up. And unfortunately, if I put it in the board very secure, then it's going to block access to this connector. I'm not going to be able to remove it. So it's as secure as it can be, but it's not perfectly secure and it's not an ideal situation, but it, it should do the trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some caps on tape around this area here. So these connectors, just protect them from the heat and try my best to basically not damage those connectors so let's protect that touchscreen and daughter board connector uh, 
and I'm going to pop this off because this is very sensitive. So this is the NAND and because it's a memory chip it's very sensitive to heat so I'll take that off because I'm working in this area. Don't want to risk damaging the NAND and breaking the console. So best to just avoid it completely. And I'm also going to protect this connector here as well. I'll put a bit of Captain Type over that bit. If you're working with sensitive areas such as plastic and things, always make sure to protect the area. And I'm going to put a bit more there just to stop that from falling off. Okay, so what I need to do first is I need to add some flux just to help the solder to flow. So I add just a little bit of flux there to that connector and I'm going to take the heat gun and I'm going to try my best to direct the heat as best as I can to make sure that I don't damage anything else and the connectors on the bottom should be fine shouldn't be having shouldn't be having any issues with those the LCD connectors come off fairly easily with heat so I'm just going to heat up the bottom I'm going to start fairly far away and just heat up the bottom of the connector or the bottom of the board so when I start to see this flux melt properly, then I'll start to come in closer. But I just want to get the board warm in that general area for now. And that's it. So it's coming fairly close now. And when I see this flux start to get this um, solder start to go shiny, I'll know it's time to come off. Right, let's add a bit more flux there. And that doesn't appear to want to come off. Oh, it's okay. Let's try again. So I've just moved my heat gun slightly so as the tubes are not bent as much. Right, should we try and remove it from the top? That's more like it. So that came off easier from the top. When we put the new connector on, it will have to be soldered from the bottom because we can't afford to melt it. Um, we didn't damage any of the connectors there, which is great. So, let me just double check and make sure. And I'll put some fresh caps on tape over it. So I'm gonna take those off. And that done its job and protected the LCD connector. That's fantastic. Oh, not the LCD, sorry, the uh, power connector and the fan and stuff. So the Captain Tape did its job there, but because we're going to be using heat again, I'm going to be putting fresh on just because I don't want to risk damaging it. And it does melt, it just deflects the heat while it's melting. So I'm, I'm waiting for the board to cool down as well before I do any more work. 
because I don't I basically don't want to risk knocking any components off the bottom because there's a lot of small components there and there is a risk of knocking them off so if I let the board cool down a little bit before we go any further it should be okay Right, there we go, so that one can stay, but like I said, the the connectors, the captain tape has done its job in protecting the connectors, which is great, it means that we haven't got to replace any more, so it's just going to be a case of replacing the LCD connector. So I'm going to try and secure this board in, it's nice and cool now as well. So I apologise if I knock the camera, it is very close. Okay, right, so next what I want to do is I need to replace the solder that's on this connector here, or on these pads here, I need to replace that with leaded solder. And the reason for that is because leaded solder has a much lower melting temperature than unleaded solder. And by mixing it with leaded solder, we're changing the chemical makeup of the uh, of the pads of the solder on the pads. We're changing the chemical makeup and lowering the melting temperature on it. So it's going to mean that the connector is going to melt into place before everything else does. So I'll add some flux. And then I'm going to get the leaded solder I'm just going to pop some solder onto the end of my tip and I apologize if my finger gets in the way here of the camera I'm just going to replace all of these pads with leaded solder. Just like so. I'm going to inspect them under the microscope just to make sure. And that looks great. So we should be good with that. That should be good to go. Uh, so like I said, the original connector did melt, which is to be expected, so there's the original connector, and that's to be expected that the original connector is going to melt because we heated it up from the top. Um, it was lead free solder and it just didn't want to come off from the bottom, so uh, yeah, it's just one of them things. Um, so before I go any further, I'm going to clean up the board. So I'm going to get rid of this flux that's on here and I'm also going to put some fresh Kapton tape there just to protect the area and make sure that it doesn't make sure that it doesn't melt those connectors when we put the new connector on. It shouldn't do anyway but it's always best to be safe. So I'll just get rid of this flux. There we go, nice and clean. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to line this up under the microscope just to make sure that it's in position. So I'm going to get it under the microscope quickly. And that's a little bit of an awkward angle, uh, unfortunately, but it's just easier than having to move the camera again. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to basically, well I need to apply some more capped on tape first actually. So let's pop that over there. And there's a bit over there. 
just to protect that area. Then, that, then let's add a little bit more just over here just to stop it from coming loose because it does come away from the board when you heat it up. So that should be fine there. We've got enough room to work with for the connector itself. And this is only to line the connector up basically. So if we just move the camera there so you can see. And um, like I said, this is just to line the connector up. We're going to move the board back over to the edge of the table in a minute. So what I want to do is just line the connector up so as it's in position. And then I can use the hot air afterwards to basically solder it into place. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but we do need it roughly in the right spot. So I'm going to melt. I'm going to melt the flux. What's there? So I'm going to melt the flux just so as it's sitting flat, flat to the board. I know that's moving around at the minute. That's fine. That's absolutely fine by me. Okay. So the flux, once it's melted, it's actually going to help us because it's going to allow the connector to stick in position. And what I'm going to need to do, I think, is I'm going to need to look at this on an angle. So I'm going to tilt my microscope so I can see it on an angle and make sure that those pins are actually in deep in position. Uh, that's not going to work. Right, so I'm going to have to do it off camera, I think. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to tilt it and just line it up. And uh, hopefully I'll get the footage, but if not, I'll just skip. So let's get this lined up. I'm going to take it out of the board holder just for lining purposes. And let's use the tweezers. I hope you can see this. I'm not sure if you can or not. Right, so that's fairly close to being lined up. I think I don't think you'll have been able to see me lining that up. But what I'm going to do is, because I can't actually see the pins, I'm going to hang it over the edge of the table. I'm going to use my mat to weigh it down a little bit. And then I'm going to use the microscope as well. Because I can't see the pins, my eyesight is terrible. And I can't see those pins without the microscope. So unfortunately, it's just one of them things where I've got to use it. So I'm going to hang my microscope over the edge of the table. There we go. So my microscope is in the perfect spot now. And I'm going to do the same as what I did to start with. I'm going to heat it up from the bottom and... Because it's low, because it's leaded solder now, it should melt fairly easily compared to the rest of the board. So we shouldn't have a problem soldering it back on. So I'm going to do that now. And I can already see the flux starting to melt.
I just saw that drop. So I'm going to give it a couple more seconds. And that should be it. That should be done. Right, so let's take a look at this and see what we can see. So it does look as though it's connected. Whether it actually is or not, I don't know. I'm going to try and look on an angle and just see if I can see anything. I'm going to wait for the board to cool down for a minute or two because that is super hot and I don't want to burn myself. So I'll give that a minute to cool down and then I'll take a look under the scope um, with the board on an angle and see if that connector has gone into place. Right, okay, so that should have cooled down enough, so let's give it a clean. I'm using a flux brush here just to be able to get inside all of the pins. These are actually brand new, I've just had these delivered today, I bought them off eBay. Can't remember how much they were, but I'll leave a link down below. These are pretty, uh, pretty useful to have. I'm just going to clean the board, just make sure that we've got no flux residue inside the connector. Because otherwise the connector is not going to make, either not going to make a connection or it's not going to close properly. So, just clean that up. And the connector hatch still works. Excellent. So I'm going to take a look on an angle now and just see if I can see anything out of the ordinary. And those joints actually look really good. They really do. Um, so, what about the other side? Let's have a look at these ones. Every single one of those appear to be connected. Excellent. That might have gone better than I expected. So I've just taken a look under the microscope and uh, everything appears okay. So uh, I suppose all that's left to do is just to test it. Okay, so let's get the captain tape off here now. Now that the board's cooled down enough. The reason I wait for the board to cool down a little bit before I take the captain tape off is because I don't want to end up pulling any, pulling any components off the board. And... Because the captain tape's sticky, if the solder's still molten, it will just rip those little components straight off. And that's something we don't want. Because it wouldn't be pretty, so... We want to avoid that. And you can see how much that heat protected the area. This, this, uh, this bit of captain tape has been used twice and it's not been melted. So it's definitely protected that area. Which is always good to see. There we go. Okay, so there's the captain tape removed. So like I said, all that's left to do is to test it. Um, I can't really get in there with a pair of tweezers to give them all the nudge test. But if it doesn't work, then I'll obviously find a really, really fine conical tip for the soldering iron. And basically try and re-solder the joints. Um, but that appears to have gone better than I, better than I expected it to. So... That's great. Um, hopefully it works. I wasn't looking forward to this job actually to be honest. I've never done one of these. So... Yeah. Um, I've never... I mean, obviously, I've done repairs on switches, but I've never changed an LCD connector. This is the first one I've ever done. Um, but we all have to start somewhere. And it wasn't too bad, I must admit. It weren't too bad at all. It's quite an easy job to do. When you've got the right tools, it's not too bad. Alright, so let's get that... Let's try and get this board back in. I'm going to have to remove the fan and I better turn that heat gun off because it's doom on not this is why I can't wait for my new one to come because he's got an auto off feature but it's taking its time 
I'm not going to say what it is because I don't know when it's going to arrive. I don't know when this video is going to be coming out. And I want to do an unboxing. So I'm going to avoid giving any information as to who I've gone with in terms of a new heat gun. Come on. There we go. So I'm not going to screw it in yet. Uh, that's missing the copper tape, so I'll put some more on there. I will replace that copper tape. Didn't actually notice that to start with. But it's meant to have some copper tape on it, so I'll replace that. Uh, my partner actually said to me a couple of days ago, why did you buy copper tape? And, uh, well, that's why. Right, so I'm just going to connect up basics. And basics are going to be LCD, power button, and battery and backlight. So there's the power button and let's connect up the LCD so even though even though generally I'm usually confident in repairs because I've never done this before I'm not gonna I'm not gonna just assume it works Right, this isn't going in. It's definitely not that it's definitely not that ribbon. Definitely not the ribbon. Or at least it shouldn't be. I hope not. Because that's gonna be a much more expensive repair to replace the L C D. Could just have a bit of flux inside the connector. Ah, there we go. That's better. That's more like it. That's going in nice. Excellent. Right. So, we might as well t connect up the touchscreen just to test it. Even though we know the touchscreen was working, we have had heat on that area. So, if we connect it up and make sure it works, we've got the backlighting and we've got the power button. So let's turn it on, shall we? We don't need the fan for now. Is it going to work? No. No, it's not. Hmm. All right, let me give that a minute. Right then, ladies and gents, so a minor disturbance there. The person who came to fix my car a few days ago has just come to pick his jack up, his car jack. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's one of them. Uh, right, so this LCD doesn't appear to be working. And neither does the touch screen. Uh, right, let's have a look at 
charging current. Let's see what let's see what's char what the charge is saying. So I'm going to plug it into my computer this time because my phone battery is dead and I'm recording and 4K absolutely murders battery life. So I'll use another USB cable. Let's just see what charging is saying and see make sure it's actually charging uh, the battery. Right, so we've got 0.39 so that's slow charge uh, we probably can't draw much more from a Nintendo switch on the um, computer so it is charging when well, it's charging at 0.39 amps uh, right let's Let's just disconnect it and plug it back in. I'm hoping that the LCD connector has not been damaged. Uh, let's just double check, make sure we've got the power button connected up. And I said I hope the LCD connector is not damaged. I meant I hope the LCD ribbon isn't damaged. I can confirm it. I can confirm that with another screen, of course. So I will do that if necessary. All right, so let's just check this in, shall we? Yeah, we're getting nothing absolutely nothing so whether that's the backlight or whether it's the screen I don't know or it could still be the connector of course so we're getting absolutely nothing so far uh, right I'm going to take the board back out and I'm going to check all of the connections on the screen itself So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disconnect the screen and just check all of those pins on the LCD connector. The weird thing is there's no backlight either. I'm, su I'm sure if the screen wasn't working, the backlight wouldn't work. Uh, or rather the backlight would work. So... I don't know. Hmm. Right, I'm going to have a look at this under the microscope to see if I can figure anything out. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm hoping you can see this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run over all of the pins with a pair of tweezers. Right, all of those pins look fine. They all appear connected. Yeah, those pins look good. That is soldered correctly. 100%. Right, I'm going to test it with another screen. I think that's the best option. I'm just going to take the board out. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. I'm an absolute idiot. Oh, I haven't connected this back up. It's not going to work. I am such a moron. I am such a moron, it's never going to turn on, because that's not on. I am such a moron. Right, so let's hope this works now. So, the NAND... The, the console will never turn on with either no NAND there or the wrong NAND. So, if it was the NAND out of another console, then it wouldn't work. Um, and also, if it's missing, it won't work. So... I'm going to have to find that now because I don't know where I've put it. Oh, there it is. But yeah, it's never going to work. Not with that missing. Right, so let's try and connect this again. I've just sat there and disconnected all of this.
So because I took that out to protect it, I just completely forgot. I don't usually take these out when those out when I'm working on a switch unless there's water damage there. Right, so that connector is going in beautifully. I really hope this works now. I have actually got a bit more high hopes for it now because just because of how easy that connector is going in. But I am such a moron. Right, let's connect this up before we connect the battery. Right? And I bet people were screaming at the screen as well. Uh, you know what, forget the touch screen for now. We don't need it. Um, it just saves taking it on and off. Right, three, two, one. Yes! Get in there. Yes! We have display. That is more like it. Yes. Thank you. That is a job done. That's fantastic. Right, let's get this back together, shall we? Right, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is replace this copper tape that goes here. So I've got a reel of copper tape here, and uh, it's not as thick as the stuff that would usually go here, but we can always put a few layers side by side. Um, this is just something that I bought just because you know I never know when I'm going to need it and it comes in handy so let's just take the reel I'm going to get rid of that bit what I was using to hold it down there we go so I'll clean that off make sure we've got a nice fresh piece to work with so I don't know why that's missing I don't know who's done it but that copper tape is there and intended to help transfer the heat so that's why I'm going to put it back it doesn't matter if it overlaps a little bit so I'm just going to put a few layers just to basically restore the heat transfer capabilities I'm going to make sure that I don't overlap any just because it would be different size in different places, even though the thermal paste would take care of that. Let's try, let's try and at least do it properly. And I'll trim it down afterwards. Just to make it look a bit neater. So three pieces should be plenty. There we go, okay. So let's trim that down. So I'm just going to take a pair of tweezers. And I'll hold it there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. But that should be good enough. There we go, just neaten it up a little bit. So there's some fresh copper tape on there just to help to absorb that heat and transfer the heat. That should be good enough. And one thing I want to do before I carry on is just secure this reel again because I don't want it flying all over the workshop. No doubt my son will be in here later messing. And he likes things like this, what spin? He's only three years old. future technician in the making he already gets my screwdrivers so I'll just uh, secure that down there like that there we go okay so let's just put this back together now and then we'll test everything make sure it all works make sure it charges and then we'll be good to go
There we go. Excellent. Right, so let's give the screen a wipe. So these wet wipes have actually dried out. And now I'm just going to use a bit of isopropyl alcohol on the wipe itself. So you can see where it's wet there. Um, I've clearly dried those out, so I'm not using I'm not using any kind of water or liquid. I'm just using isopropyl alcohol, which is not going to hurt the system. And um, we're just going to clean this off. And then we'll use the other end of it to dry you. There we go. I'll use a microfiber cloth on that later to get rid of any dust and, dust and particles. Let's turn it on. And there we go. So that's all working. And this job is complete. So part, time for my favourite part of the video. And that is the summary. So this console originally went to one of my business customers. And it went in for a charger port replacement. And unfortunately during the disassembly or the reassembly process. The LCD connector was damaged. So by taking the old connector off and using hot air to solder a new one on from underneath. We've managed to restore the display and get this console fully working again. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoy what you see, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button and let me know down in the comments section down below. If you do want to see more trying to fix videos where I try and fix mainly stuff like this, mainly consoles, but sometimes other things too, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified every time they upload. I am trying really, really hard to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you could subscribe, it would really help out the channel a lot. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, see you later. Bye for now.